And Skylar Baylor. The first transgender male. The first openly transgender athlete. The first ever transgender person to play on an NCAA men's team. Testosterone is one of like the only arguments about why trans women shouldn't compete in women's sports. Could you maybe present the key arguments why you disagree with them? There is available research that supports that testosterone suppression does produce meaningful competition between cis and trans women. Michael Phelps produces half the levels of lactic acid. He's got twice the lung capacity of the average person. But when people talk about that, what do they say? Wow. If those differences exist in the women's category, it is immediately considered unfair. If I were to decide tomorrow that I was a 47-year-old woman, should I be allowed to go shower in a women's locker room? There's been no actual effect on sexual assault statistics across the states when this was kind of implemented. It is playing on real fears that I think are valid. We do need to protect women and girls. How optimistic are you, Skylar, and uh, what do you think the next steps are now? Yeah, um, I'm not really a religious person myself, but I find it a bit weird how sometimes people use like Christianity, the religion of love and acceptance to to kind of spin it into into hateful rhetoric. And uh, yeah. I think a lot of that comes from misrepresentations and misinterpretation. Um, yeah. But kind of kind of moving moving that on to something quite quite topical and also quite controversial. Um, in some aspects, maybe more controversial than, the, than sports, which mm. is um, legislation around around bathrooms. Um, and you wrote in your book how how there's been no actual effect on sexual assault uh, statistics uh, across mm. the states when this was kind of implemented. So the um, kind of the changes to to, to the legislation around uh, bathrooms, and and there's been I feel quite a lot of panic around this and. I was wondering why you think the panic is kind of so gripping on public mm -hmm. dis discourse and um and what do you think about these concerns? Yeah. That are yeah, being raised by people. Yeah. So the shortest answer is that the panic is gripping and effective because it is playing on real fears that I think are valid. So for example, the bathroom one is um the, the rallying cry is we need to protect women and girls, right? And here's the thing. We do need to protect women and girls. I can agree with that. I hope both of you can agree with that, right? I absolutely want to protect women and girls. But the problem is that they're using that rallying cry and then marrying it with a ton of propaganda saying that the thing that threatens women and girls, women and girls is somehow trans people in bathrooms specifically. And when we do that, we're taking the base fear of wanting to protect women and girls, and then we're marrying it immediately. Again, this is just propaganda tactics. Immediately with the thing that we want people to be afraid of, which is trans people, and then we get the ban of trans women um, or trans people, generally speaking, in bathrooms. But we're using a really valid fear and a really important fear. The problem is that the people saying that we need to, you know, ban trans women um, or or ban trans people from bathrooms are often the same people that are likely to perpetuate assault. And so a lot of it is about pointing fingers when the fingers should be pointed back at the people who are pointing the fingers. The most common perpetrators of sexual assault for young people are actually um, men who are already either related to or friends of the family with the kids that are assaulted, which is bonkers. I, I, this is a statistic that was, I, I believe in my book, but if it's not, I'll say it now, 53% of girls who are, are sexually assaulted, sexually abused are done so by their biological fathers. 53% wow. of girls who are assaulted are assaulted by their biological fathers. So the people that we're afraid of are the people who are making these laws, right? These are toxic cis men who are basically pointing the fingers to scapegoat trans people when the problem is way, way not trans people and way bigger, honestly, than trans people. Um, so we, I really think we need to think more. This is where the facts need to be really loud. <laughs> um, and then the, the fingers pointed need to really see what we're looking at because there is a big problem with sexual assault for young people and specifically girls and specifically women, but the people perpetuating those problems are not trans people. Um, there's actually been zero zero evidence that there is any issue with any trans people assaulting anybody in bathrooms. And there actually has been also no documented cases of a man pretending to be a woman to gain access to women's spaces to then assault women or play sports if we want to go down that route. Um, but even if there was a problem of that, who is the problem? <laughs> the man, not trans woman. 
Um, so I think the, the reason that it's, again, it's so effective is because people are very afraid of girls and women being sexually assaulted. Why? Because they are being sexually assaulted. Right. But again, the problem is not trans people. And it's, it's just it, the, the, the propaganda and the, the rhetoric is so powerful and so, uh, so effective that it's become this, this, you know, bullhorn that everybody is listening to because they're afraid and they're being told here's the solution and people want so badly to have a solution to this rampant issue um but again it's not happening in public bathrooms it's not happening at the hands of trans people it's happening largely at home with trusted men either ones that are, are already family members or others that are f friends of the family um, which is a bigger problem that we need to solve and we need to stop punishing trans people for the harm that all of these men are, are really perpetuating. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the episode. I just wanted to drop you in a word from our sponsor, Manscaped. You can use the discount code LOAF to get your discount because even a lion needs to tame its mane. Get the performance package 5.0 Ultra from Manscaped now. Stay fresh with no cuts so that your baguette leaves no crumbs. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that short clip with Skylar Baylor. If you want to check out the full episode, click right here. Since you got to the end, I'm assuming you liked the video, so please leave a like. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because we've got loads more like that coming very soon.